Welcome back to my kitchen. I had to get down to your level because the tablet is sitting on the table. But anyway, today I thought we would do a little bit of experimenting with the GT Express 101 that I have. Now it's been, oh, I don't know, we played with it quite a bit last year and made a lot of cool things with it, but I haven't used it a whole lot since things got back to normal. So today I've decided that we're going to make some apple hand pies. Now the hand pies are the ones that you can buy in the store that, you know, has the apple filling and looks like a pie and it's glazed. That's what we're going to try and do. I do not have a recipe for this. I have not seen this done on any video or any place that I've looked online, which there's very few uh, recipes that I found for these online. And my uh, GT Express 101 playlist has become kind of popular. So anyway, what we are going to use is I have some, is that upside down? That is upside down. Crescent rolls. These happen to be the original flavor. And it is an eight pack or eight count. I bought some apple pie filling because it is cheaper, like half the price of any of the other flavors. And we are also going to need some powdered sugar, my big old tub of powdered sugar. You're going to need either some milk or water and a bowl to make your powdered sugar glaze in. And to do that, I have this little cookie sheet here. I put a little bit of scrap parchment paper on the bottom and this rack on top because when we go to glaze our hand pies, I'm going to lay my hand pie on the rack and then just drizzle the glaze over the top so it allows the excess glaze to drip off. Are we ready to go? Let's get going. Oh, and I also need to mention that I do not have this plugged in and I'm not, hi guys, sorry. I am not gonna plug it in until I am ready to start cooking my hand pies because I know when it gets hot, it just, the uh, dough is just gonna get so soft and it'll be difficult to do anything with it. So for now, like I said, this is cold. I have not turned it on. Let's get this over out of the way and let's get going. And I am just going to keep these into rectangles. I'm going to press the seams together. I hope this works. I'm not real sure what I'm doing here. Like I said, we are experimenting. And I never can get my seams to stay together. I'm going to go grab a little bit of flour or something to put on my counter so this doesn't stick. Okay, just a very, very light dusting. I don't want a whole lot on here because... I guess we'll see, won't we? Just a real light dusting is what I'm putting on there. And I'm gonna kind of press this out because I want it to fit inside the little well here, which you can see what it looks like here. The bottom well is twice the depth of the one on the top, roughly. I'm not good with numbers or math, so, and I'm not afraid to admit it. But I'm just going to kind of press this out a little bit. Kind of make it a little bit thinner. Just like that. And it did, doing this does make the seam stick together a whole lot better. Alright, I think I'm going to press all these and then 
we will get the apples opened up. Put a little bit more down. That one turned out more square. The other one's like a rectangle. That one's a little more on the square side. Oh well, they don't need to be perfect. Okay, interesting side note, doing this method of putting a little bit of flour down makes that seam like seal right up. I've always had trouble with that, so I'm going to try and remember that. Alright, last one. I guess you're gonna need a spoon too for dipping your apple stuff. <laughs> All right, my apple has a pull tab thing, which I'm super excited because I don't want to get the can opener down. Oh, yummy. They look delicious. One thing I do know is you do need the apple pie filling. Don't make the mistake that I made the first time I attempted doing this and get like the apples like in the fruit section. This was actually in the baking section of my grocery store. Yeah, the first time that I did this with the, the fruit section stuff, it did not work. So I'm going to leave that. I'll show you a picture here in just a second. <clears throat> of what I am doing. I think you need, mine anyway, it needs to be a little more square instead of rectangle. So let me get this over here so that I can kind of show you what I have done in my little GT Express. Okay, real quick, I have um, done this with all four of my compartments. I made sure that it was up on one side, the other side obviously a little bit shorter, so that I can put my apples in the middle and then fold this over and then tuck this bottom over and try and seal it. Hey, this is future Anna here and I am sitting at work editing this video and I realized that apparently I was not recording while I was filling the little pastry thingies with the apple filling. All I did was take a small amount, roughly about a tablespoon worth of my apple pie filling and put it in each little compartment. I folded the edge that was hanging over. I folded it over the long edge over and then the edge that was hanging over the uh, GT Express down and tucked it in a little bit and pinched the edges. It sealed up really well and I did not have any leakage or anything like that. So back to the video. Okay, while we are waiting on for these for these to cook, we are currently sitting at two and a half or two minutes and 16 18 19 seconds but let's go ahead and make our glaze to put on top now i don't know who i about dropped my powdered sugar on the floor thank goodness for the snap click lids oh my goodness that was scary i don't have any milk so i'm just going to use water 
And I'm going to start with, I'm going to say four tablespoons. I'm going to estimate about a tablespoon per little pie. That looks good, don't it? Because we want plenty of glaze on there. We like the glazed ones. There we go. And then I'm going to run over to my sink and I'm going to put, I'm going to start out, well, let me get some water. There we go. Got another one of those little bowls. I'm going to start, let's see, one. Let's go with two tablespoons and see what that does. Because I want it thin, but I don't want it too thin. I guess I could always add more powdered sugar. Um, I think that was too much. So I do need to add more powdered sugar. Because, yeah, that's just like super watery. That's too thin. So, told you we was experimenting. I'm gonna take a peek. Oh, those are puffing up quite nice. Those look interesting. So, I'm gonna put two more tablespoons in there. Let's see what happens. By the way, this is a color changing spoon that I have. If it's, I guess my water is not cold enough, but the pink changes to purple when the water, when the liquid or whatever is cold. And in the winter time, when it's super cold, it the spoon will be purple and it'll change to pink when you warm it up. So it works both ways. I think that looks about right. What do you think? Does that look about right? Still a little thin, maybe? I don't know. I've never done this before. I'm going to leave it at that. So that was six tablespoons of powdered sugar to two tablespoons of water. And we will leave that. That should be enough for my four just to drizzle some over the top. I've got it mixed up to where the powdered sugar is mostly dissolved. I don't want to pour it out. If you guys can see that. If I had some vanilla, I would add some vanilla to that, but I don't. So, let's see, we're up to almost six minutes. When you see they've puffed up, I probably need to flip them over. Yeah, they're brown on the bottom, so I'm going to turn them over. So about six minutes, I flipped them over. Woo, they're hot. Burning my fingers. Put that back down for another few more minutes, and I'll check back with you guys. Okay, we are at almost nine minutes, and the package instruction, if you were to cook them in the oven, uh, says to cook them for nine to 12 minutes. So I'm gonna check and see what these look like to see whether I think they are done. They're looking pretty good. What do you think? I think a little bit longer, just a smidgen longer. They feel kind of doughy there on the sides. So I'm gonna let this keep going for about another minute or two, and then I will check back with you guys. Okay, we are right at 11 minutes, so I'm going to pop these up and see. Oh my goodness, they look toasty brown, and it's starting to bubble out right here. I don't know if you can see that, but the apple pie filling is starting to bubble out. There's the top, there's the bottom. I say they're probably done. I'm going to pull these out and, ooh, that's hot. That's ugly, that's the bottom. There we go, that looks pretty. I'm going to set them out here on my little rack to cool. Oh my goodness, those are hot. And... When they are cooled enough, I will come back and we will glaze these and give them a taste test. 
All right, these are definitely not cold, but they are much cooler and I can hold them. So I think it'll be fine to put the glaze on. Besides, we want to eat them while they're still a little bit warm instead of cold. So I'm just gonna drizzle some glaze across the top. Kind of like that. You know, like donuts. Kind of brush it off the side. I have no clue what I'm doing. That's why I put the paper on the bottom. <laughs> Easier cleanup. I'd say the amount of glaze that we made is about right for for these. Got just a little bit left over, but I'm not gonna put them. I don't want them too soggy. All right, I'm gonna let these sit for a little bit and let that harden up. Hopefully it hardens up and I'll check back with you guys in a few minutes. Okay, I got lazy and I stuck them in the refrigerator for a little bit because I still want them to be a little bit warm. But as you can see, the glaze is sitting there on top. So I'm like a little extra on, so it might be a little runny. But I'm gonna give these a try. Steve, you want to come over here? Well, it's easier because I can stand right here and they can hear you. I'll slide this over. Here you go. What's your opinion? I mean, what's my opinion? I haven't taken a bite yet. Well, I know, but. It's pretty good. Pretty good? <laughs> Crush is a little thick. Yeah. They're not bad. No. Yeah. I'll say the crust is a little thick. But, of course, we did use a crescent roll. Maybe next time I can do this little experiment and we can try it with some pie crust. No, no it'll be store-bought pie crust because I've never been successful in making some really good homemade pie crust.